The Kadal Salipso Story, a succinct radio series in 25 episodes, tracing the history and development of Kadal Salipso music. Episode 10. By 1975, most of the leading Kadal Salipso groups toured regularly the French overseas departments and to a lesser extent, metropolitan France mainly in Paris, where the Antillean population exceeded the Caribbean French departments combined, and these people were almost all employed. A new phase in the development of the genre had begun. Exile One moved to Barclay in Paris, and Gramax took advantage of the void and moved to Toisa 3A in Martinique. When the group Exile One moved to Paris and was signed to the Backley label, Cadal Slipso music had moved to the big leagues. Being in the big leagues came with its advantages and perks, but not without challenges. It must be understood that when Exile One became a Barclay artist in France, the records and the act became French products which received the same commercial treatment as any French product at that level. The group was introduced to both radio and television, which was a rarity for Creole music at the time. The presence on national radio and television represented decent copyright earnings for the songwriter. At this point, at least one Cadence Lipso group had suddenly moved to the big league as far as copyright earnings were concerned. This was 1975. The move also came with challenges. The French music industry did not have a professional category for modern Creole music, be it within the record companies or the large record stores. The notion or the term world music was yet to be coined. In France, Music fell under categories such as jazz, variété française, which were mainly covers of American hits in French, and what was called folklore, usually a small section at the back of most large record stores. There was no reggae, there was no calypso section. Exile One had to put up a convincing argument within Barclay to recognize Cadence Lipso as contemporary Creole music, which should not be confused with folklore or traditional music. This was a societal viewpoint which had to be changed. When Exile One worldwide sales exceeded those of the huge stars, French stars, that is, on the Barclay label, the large record stores were forced to feature Creole music sections, which eventually became world music sections. The years from 1975 to 1977 saw the disappearance of many Kadasips of bands and artists. The theory of natural selection was on the move. The Toisa 3A label grew and took a reasonable share of the Cadence Lipso market. 3A was able to take advantage of the opportunity created by Exile One on the national stage by seeking national distribution for its products. Significantly, the group Bell's Combo was accepted for national distribution on the Vogue label. 
This should not be overlooked since the Kadan Slipser Market had distribution for mainly Caribbean and the diaspora on the one hand and international on the other hand. Kadan Slipso was going global. Bell's Combo was the first group to join Exile One in obtaining national distribution in France. The International Department of Barclay was responsible for the distribution of Kadan Slipso in the Indian Ocean, the Pacific, and the Cape Verde Islands, where the music remained embedded in those societies.